Guys, I've finally done it. I have hit Legend in Pokemon Go Go Battle League. Always thought I had Legend rank type um, skill level, and I have finally confirmed it. I am a Legend in PvP for Go Battle League. So in this video, we're going to talk about what team I use to go from 2300 all the way up to Legend. Yes, just one team what my IVs are, what my moveset was, what Pokemon it, I won the lead against and stayed in against, and what Pokemon I switched out to. So you can use this team for next Ultra League if you would like to give it a try. Again, it got me from 2300 MMR all the way up to Legend. So very exciting stuff. Finally hit Legend. I can finally be recognized as a Legend player, one of the best players in the world. So there you have it. Let's get into today's video. So let's go ahead and get into how this happened. So on January 26th, I went from 2302 to this, 2556 in just five sets. This was the beginning of Ultra League. Now I've been using my team in Open Ultra, not Premier. Premier has a lot of Pokemon in it. So as we go through here, gone up 300 MMR in just three days, 2612, a new all time high. I could not stop winning. 2667. This is January 27th. Highest I've ever been. I'm a god confirmed. 380 MMR since Monday, starting from 2300. This is January 28th. I couldn't stop winning. 2821. January 28th. I keep winning. 2860. January 31st. 2922. Now, notice you don't see anything and then 2973 on february 6th i got so close and then of course leading to yesterday 2995 and then i hit legend now there was a gap here i did fall off the face of the earth i want to put a disclaimer i fell off the face of the earth around here i went down to 2781 started dabbling with some different teams switching some pokemon up nope terrible idea went back to the same team that we're about to go over right now Obstagoon. This is the lead, and this is an amazing Pokemon. My IVs for this Pokemon is 11, 11, 13. The moves that I have for Obstagoon are Counter, Night Slash, Gunk Shot. Uh, so Counter, Night Slash, Gunk Shot. Not, not Cross Chop. Why? Why not Cross Chop? Because Counter and Night Slash, especially if you get a boost, you want to spam Night Slash anyway. Uh, can do fine against the metals. That is Melmetal and Registeel. Absolutely fine. Gunkshot is for pretty much one hit KOs against Clefable, Granbull, and Togekiss. Now, the other two Pokemon, like Gengar, which we'll get into, does counter Togekiss really well and the, and the Fairies, but we'll get into that in a minute. Now, what Pokemon, because this is your lead, this was my lead, what Pokemon does Ostagoon win against that I have found from my own personal experience? Gyarados with Waterfall or Dragon Breath. Charizard. Dragon Breath preferred, but can win against uh, Fire Spin. Because remember, every time we're using Night Slash, we have that chance to increase our attack stat. Uh, Giratina, obviously. I stay in against Cress. I stay in against Cress because you can take one Moonblast, but you can't take two. So I try to shield, try to get one of their shields after using about three. And then I switch into Gengar and farm down because Gengar can take a Moonblast or a Grass Knot. Uh, that's my... That's my uh, option against Crest. That's what I do. Uh, Melmetal I stay in because, I, I kid you not, all the climb all the way up to Legend, I only probably had four or five Melmetal use Rock Slide as their first move instead of Superpower. They just immediately go to Superpower. And if you lose the CMP tie, and they use Superpower, you shield, of course. Always shield that first move against Melmetal. And they think you're going to throw a Cross Chop, and they just severely nerfed their defense, they will shield and then probably switch out. If they don't switch out, that's fantastic. Guess what? If there's another superpower coming, take it. Take it. Don't use another shield. Take it. Farm down Mel Metal. And if they switch it to a fairy or a fighting type, go straight into Gengar. Pretty simple, right? Pretty simple tactics. Um, this Pokemon does really well against Typhlosion with Incinerate. I, I, I will say this, and this is from my personal experience, but Typhlosion with Incinerate, unless you pair it with a phenomenal team, is absolutely 
garbage. Incinerate, Typhlosion is garbage. I get almost three counters in one turn of Incinerate. I can get two Night Slashes, and if no shielding, almost completely kills a Typhlosion, because you're talking about the five counters and Night Slash, five counters and Night Slash, before Typhlosion gets off two Blast Burns. It's absolutely insane. Uh, same thing with Ho-Oh. Uh, especially going up against Obstagoon, you might think that's a bad matchup, but if you if your opponent does end up using Brave Bird, you shield it, Night Slash is going to just absolutely wreck Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh's defense goes down the toilet when it uses Brave Bird. Same thing if you have a Cresselia Ho-Oh matchup as well. If it uses a Brave Bird and you take it and then use a Moonblast, it's actually going to do a massive amount of damage. So just to reiterate, Pokemon that you win the lead, you will win the fight against with Obstagoon. Giratina, stay in with Melmetal, stay in against uh, Incinerate Typhlosion, stay in against a Gyarados, stay in against a Crest until you switch and get it down low enough and switch into Gengar. Uh, Ostagoon leads like mirror matches, stay in with those, try to get those shields out, you need to shield as well. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Obviously the Charmers, you would force switch into Gengar. Any fighting types like Sir Fetched or even Machamp, you force switch into Gengar. This is your safe swap for two reasons, and why it's in my second slot. Or it's in my third slot, excuse me. I have these backwards. Uh, Gengar is a safe swap because when it goes into the battle, you'll get two or three Shadow Claws before your, your opponent switches, which is three out of five that you need for Shadow Punch. Shadow Punch is a must. You have to have Shadow Punch. You have to. It, you have to. If you can't get Shadow Punch on your Gengar, don't use it. This isn't going to work for you. You have to have Shadow Punch, and of course you have to have Shadow Claw. Now, like I said, if you get two to three uh, Shadow Claws off against your Fairy type or your Fighting type, uh, Shadow Punch. One other Pokemon I met, forgot to mention was a Scavalier. A Scavalier, uh, you want to switch into Gengar and try to get a Shadow Punch off, but pay attention to see if your opponent's going to switch or not. Because I always draw a shield against a Scavalier if they're trying to stay in to hit a drill run, and I, get, I pull a shield, which is fantastic. A Scavalier is walled by Gengar. Anyway, going back to Gengar, uh, you have like you already have some energy gain for that Pokemon they're going to be switching into. Now, here's a very very pro tip. Uh, this all depends on your MMR, what you're going to be running for your second move. I was running Shadow Ball all the way up until about 2700. And then once I got into 2800, I started going into Sludge Bomb in the higher ranks because I was running into I was running into Snorlaxes, which Sludge Bomb does almost half its health, and I was running the more Farious, and I was trying to bait with a Shadow Punch and then one hit KO with Sludge Bomb. So the best way to run Gengar is I would start out with Shadow Ball. If it does not work out for you, Sludge Bomb is the next move, and of course, again. Gengar covers all the fairy types, covers all the fighting types. It even covers uh, it covers a Scavalier. It covers uh, Giratina, depending on the shield situation, obviously. Uh, it covers Cresselia pretty well. Uh, it covers Venusaur. Venusaur is a very good cover as well. Um, and if you're in a shield advantage of any kind, it covers Charizard. Sludge Bomb almost one hit KOs it. It covers Typhlosion. Um, it does pretty well, and it does solid damage against the Steel types as well. You can take one Rock Slide from Melmetal, so it covers Melmetal as well. Two Shadow Claws, or two Shadow Punches on a Melmetal brings it down to like 20% health, 25% health. So, Gengar is really good, and this is a safe swap. Now, the, the cleanup crew is Cresselia. Um, by the way, my Gengar IVs is like 2, 15, 14. Or actually, it's 0 15 15 for IVs. It's 0 15 15. I have a perfect Gengar, in my eyes at least. 0 15 15 IVs for Gengar. Now, Cresselia. IVs right off the bat for this is 14 15 15. You're probably thinking, that's not the best PvP IVs, Vincity. Why do you have such high IV under Cresselia? Mirror matches. Mirror matches. If you're open ultra, mirror matches, you want to win those mirror matches. And that is why I have Cresselia. Now, Cresselia is obviously, it only counters a handful of things and for good reason. One, you definitely have to have Grass Knot to cover Swampert. I see it all the time. Swampert also, it walls Gengar. Uh, Swampert definitely 
is a very common Pokemon in the open league. So Grass Knot, you have to have. Psycho Cut is a given. Do not run Confusion. I've seen people run Confusion and I absolutely destroy them in the mirror matches. Do not run Confusion at all. Please don't. It's terrible. Psycho Cut, Grass Knot, Moonblast. I've seen people run Future Sight and although that is an okay move, you need to be able to also bait your opponent as well. Let's say you farm up for a Moonblast, it's going to do super effective damage, but you have that not only the health, but the shields to kind of play with your opponent a little bit, and you go for a Grass Knot and you bait them. You go for the Grass Knot, you still have extra energy left over, then you go to the Moonblast, one hit KO, you win the match, right? So that's another reason why Grass Knot I think is better than Future Sight, is the baiting. Aurora Beam is neither here nor there. One thing that you're going to notice about this team is it, the entire team is specifically designed to absolutely destroy Giratina. Giratina will not survive this team, and Giratina with Shadow Claw, uh, especially leads against this, it's unreal. But like, Shadow Claw does nothing. So Giratina is absolutely destroyed no matter what, with the main Pokemon you'd see in Open Ultra. Uh, just to give you guys kind of an idea of some teams I've come across that I've won against, I've won against a Giratina, Alola Muck, Reggie Steel team. Yes, with this team. I'm not kidding you. With this team. So, if you. One major thing that you have to do when using a team is you have to stick to a team and learn how it plays. You have to learn how it plays. You gotta learn when to switch. You gotta learn when to shield. You gotta learn when to overfarm. You gotta learn when to underfarm. Stuff like that. Um, and I've just perfected this team and it covers almost everything. Now, there are some times where it's, uh, you know, like a fairy, a fighting, and a steel type. There are always going to be teams that no matter what you do, if that Registeel's in the back and you've had a hard time so far, you're going to lose the match and you can just quit. So, just to reiterate, Obstagoon lead, Cresselia in the second slot, Gengar in the third. I find that easy to switch with. Um, IVs, 11, 11, 13. Cresselia is going to be... 14, 15, 15 for me because of those mirror matches, and then my Gengar is 0, 15, 15. This is the team that got me all the way from 2300 MMR all the way up to Legend. And uh, just before we end this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, be a part of the Fit City fam, and put a comment in the comment section down below. Uh, have you tried this team? Have you come across me in Go Battle League? What do you guys think about this team? What do you guys think about the success that I've had? Let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll leave you guys with one really insane battle that I won that looked like I shouldn't have. That's it, the boy fits the I'm signing off. See you guys in the next Pokemon Go video.